What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I bring you another Anthem video. Now today guys, this video is presented by EA Game Changers and a massive thanks to them for allowing me to take part in an Anthem Early Access Capture event. Today people, I will explain all you need to know about the leveling system in the game, how it works, what it does, basically all you need to know. But before we get into the video people, I am giving away a few full copies of the Anthem game. To be in with a chance of winning it, simply make sure you subscribe to this channel, drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below. More details are in the video description. If you've already got the game pre-ordered but would still like to show your support, you can by hitting that like button. And if you are new around here, be sure to subscribe as I have many, many more exclusive Anthem videos to come which you won't want to miss. Now if you guys are new to games such as Anthem but are currently playing destiny or have in the past this will be a piece of cake for you to understand in fact i'm pretty certain this system as a whole isn't entirely new but for damn sure it's the best i've experienced and played within a game of this genre but it is easy to understand and within this video i'll explain everything you guys need to know now it's important to note this game's a leveling system and your level isn't decided on the certain javelin suits you decide to use but is with your freelancer, basically you as a player. The more you play, the more XP you earn. Your character, your player, you level up, not the suit you use. This means one suit won't get left behind if you decide to roll with a certain other suit for most of the time. So if you main an interceptor but decide to go defensive with a colossus which you rarely use because you leveled your player even though playing through one main specific javelin suit i.e an interceptor you will still be good to go good to jump into another suit and be ready to rumble because as you play along and level up you still unlock certain things for other javelin suits as well as the one you are using so nothing is left behind so as a player you level up through means of playing from running around in free play to doing story missions, contracts, strongholds, daily, weekly and even monthly challenges all rewards you XP in leveling up. At the moment the max player level is currently 30 but I'm guessing that might change in the future giving us more levels to chase. Now other than your player level there is another level which determines your overall power in play and it's classed as power so for now we're going to call it power level. This level is determined by your loadout, so in the forge under the loadout tab you will see nodes between 5 and 6 as you start. These are different for each javelin suit, but each node and item selected, which includes your weapons, components, grenades, assault systems, support systems, etc etc, all determine your power level, that overall level score. Each node also affecting your way of attacks and basically extra buffs with the components, which we'll get to in a minute. If we take a look at the weapons, in which you can select and use two, the second in which becomes unlocked at a level three, we can see all weapons have a certain power level. Now it's important to know as what you are seeing here and what you will see are mostly uncommon and common with a few rare bits and bobs thrown in. Obviously the higher the rarity, the higher the power level. Now there are six tiers of rarities in the game, common, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary and masterwork. Obviously the higher and rarer the item, the more power it will offer you as I just said. So two weapons you can select from and the power level they offer adds to your overall power level. And each node basically does the same here offering all six rarities in which again determines your overall power level. Now the components is a big thing within the game. The components basically give you six additional perks which truly affect your means of play. Each component is unlocked the more you play and the higher you level up. The first component slot is unlocked at a level 4, then 6, then 12, 14, 18 and 23. And these components each add effects in terms of buffs to your loadout. Anything from extra damage on a certain specific weapon type, to increased armor, to extra ammo for certain weapons. Again, there are also the same 6 rarities of components you can find and unlock, which all again help with that overall power level score. Once you unlock all 6 components after reaching that level 23, expect your power level to be of much greater value than obviously when you first start leveling up. You will notice each javelin does have different name nodes though, that's basically because each javelin has been set up for different purposes. While the interceptor is built to be agile and get in and out as fast as possible, the Colossus is a defensive unit which can lay down massive damage and take more damage but in return is much less agile. The Ranger is an all round javelin suit, not really having a precise go to usage but it's just an all round good javelin suit. And then there's a Storm which is more of an agile javelin but makes the most out of elemental damage attacks from a distance, probably the fans favourite at the moment. Now all javelin suits do have different nodes within their loadouts. 
all do have the components section, but other nodes can vary. Meaning while some javelin suits may be able to equip more than others, the benefits don't always mean that they are the best to use for most scenarios the game offers. But yes, each node allows access to different artillery and components which will affect your overall power level. So how is loot obtained so that you can increase your power level? Well, that's pretty simple actually. So obviously the game is full of missions, side missions, contracts, dailies, weeklies, and even monthly activities and challenges, and also in-game activities like strongholds and so forth. All drop in loot at the end of the activity, which will help you level up your power level. But like I said earlier too, completing missions on your interceptor will reward you items for usage on other javelin suits, meaning they won't get left behind if you do decide to go headfirst with one javelin. That's completely up to you. Also, people, each activity you choose to take part in has a difficulty setting, easy, normal, hard, and grandmaster, which is a real challenge. But the harder the difficulty setting you complete the mission in, the better the rewards will be. You can see the percentage increase in loot drops with the harder difficulties, but these require full coordination within your squad, using combos of attacks to be even more efficient in taking down those harder enemies. Loadouts will be vital here, with support classes definitely needed as shit gets crazy. But yeah, the harder you work, the more you are rewarded and the better that loot will be, in turn helping you level up faster and get that overall power level quicker. But guys, you can also craft gear to use, again, helping your overall power level. Now, the way crafting works is as follows. You first need to salvage certain parts depending on what you're trying to craft or even farm certain materials. At the end of missions, you are rewarded said loot. If that loot is no good to you or you have higher versions of it, you can salvage it in return getting parts for it. These parts you accumulate add up and allow you to craft certain things within your loadout section in the forge area via pressing the required next tab button. Now depending on what you're actually trying to craft will determine what you need to craft said items. If it's something for the interceptor specifically, you will no doubt need interceptor parts. These you can get for salvaging older interceptor items you no longer need or you are rewarded and no longer have use for. Other materials come from in-game methods like farming certain materials found all over the wide open free play area as well as in missions too. Or you can use the in-game earnable currency to purchase said materials from the in-game vanity store to make grinding a little less grindy. We have, I believe, almost every available mat here available for you to purchase. So crafting upgrades for your javelin seems to be a major part of the game, which is great. Crafting via unlockable blueprints is a thing to people. More info on this will come very, very soon in a video to come. Important to mention, there is a vendor within Fort Tarsus who, if you visit, shows you everything you own in terms of unlocks via all javelin classes, weapons, materials, and much, much more seen on screen now, known as the Vault. So this place will be super useful to see what you have unlocked and so forth. But yeah, guys, I think I've covered everything in regards to leveling up both your freelancer and your power level. If you guys have any questions, questions you can always tweet me at dpjsc08 or message me via my anthem facebook page or even dm me on my discord all are linked within the video description but guys stay tuned as i have many many more exclusive anthem videos to come but guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you did leaving a like really does help out if you are new around here and this is what you want to see be sure to subscribe and if you never want to miss one of my anthem videos Turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by and hopefully I will see you on that next one.